YouTube, what is going on, guys? Day one, Nate here. Amazon has now come out with the update to the roadmap. Now, this, I have not looked at this, but I popped into a couple of streams and people are going crazy. So I would assume that in my last video, as I said, we were minorly upset that we didn't get the uh, article on kind of low on and what had happened and what it looks like is that's what we have here so let's jump into it this is probably going to be a a little bit of a longer video there's a lot of information from uh from what it seems like as we scroll down it seems like this is kind of going to give us an update on everything that they talked about at loan as well as kind of an update of where we are as far as the roadmap is concerned and potentially some dates so let's uh let's kick into it Heroes of Arcasia, we're excited to share a roadmap update with new content arriving in July, September, and later this year in 2024. With new raids, activities, adventures, and tier four, the new or the next evolution of Lost Ark's endgame. Below, you'll learn when we plan to release major changes to Lost Ark, along with some descriptions of the systems if you missed Loa on. We will still release a video ro roadmap next month that covers the end of summer and fall and dives into some specifics such as detailing the months that some of the later content will be arriving in so from what i can tell is i think they kind of sensed that people were upset i think that loan was really big we kind of expected on monday that there was going to be like this basically this article and we just like didn't really get it so i think they figured we'll push this we'll push the video in a month and kind of we'll see where things stand before we dive in we wanted to take a moment and discuss our approach to communicating key updates with the lost art community this is what i this is what i mentioned i mentioned in the last video i think they're cooking because i think they don't want to fuck this up i think they want this to be done properly and i think they're aware that they haven't really been doing things properly in the last few months so I think this is kind of their approach of let's make sure that we do this right. Um, let's uh let's move all of this over like we did in the in the last Lost Ark video. Sorry, I didn't do that ahead of time. Okay, cool. Um, as a global game with global presence and different publishers, communications may vary between service regions. Which I'd always said it's kind of crazy in 2024 that we have issues uh, with communication from development companies to publishers because it just seems like in the technology, like technological world that we have, it just doesn't seem like we should have that. Um, it is always our players, or it is always our goal to provide you with transparency and keep you informed with up to date information. With major updates announcing in Loan. We were eager to acknowledge the news and announce that players would be receiving the summer celebration gift, but our teams at Amazon Games and Smilegate RPG were still collaborating to see how quickly we could bring some of these exciting updates to the West. So I think they kind of realized none of us really cared about the summer celebration gift. We wanted the meet. So they probably had a meeting the last two days, and this is what they came up with on top of the talks that i'm sure that they've already were in ideally we would have been able to share those plans uh sh share the plans immediately following loa on but our teams were still working on the full plan so as i said they didn't want to release it half-assed which as you'll discover below will kick off next month in the july update we would rather wait until we have confirmation on plans than need to delay or set expectations that fall short exact this is legitimately exactly what i said it's always our goal to bring content as fast as possible, but we need to balance the progression of players in the West. I agree, along with how systems are layered in from a build perspective in Korea. I agree, Korea has had five years and we have had a very short amount of time. We appreciate your enthusiasm and feedback, but ask for your patience when it comes to rolling out key information. All right. That being said, we're excited to share the following roadmap update with all of you. Still in the process of being localized and prepared. There are also highlights of the following months or updates. Not a comprehensive list. Okay. Cool retreat update July. After the summer heat of Echidna and South Curzon arriving in June, which arrives next week. 
Our goal for the summer is for players to not feel frantic as we head towards Tier 4. The next evolution of Lost Ark's endgame. But to be rewarded for playing, engaging with newer raids, and adventuring in Arcasia, we're extremely excited to release a batch of progression updates along with new ways for players to play with a solo mode for endgame content. So I'm not going to like read all the way through this, but we're going to touch on points that we kind of see uh, interesting. Um, raid solo mode. So this, I have, I think, a varying opinion on in comparison to a lot of players. And maybe that's because I'm coming from it from like a, a new returning player aspect. I think I wouldn't have liked this to be solo as much as I would have liked to have had this been a like you could jump in with three people or you could jump in with four people and do the raid. So you could still play with players, but not kind of like <clears throat> bear down on others, right? So like you still get to play and you get to play with your friends but i also do understand um that like the the possibility of doing that is probably extremely difficult so they kind of just dumped it in as solo um a new solo mode will be added that enables the options for player to challenge lost ark's main content raids and dungeons alone okay um uh, raid mechanics before going to a group cool Solo mode will support raids starting with a Vaulton Region raid or Vaulton Legion raid all the way to Ivory Tower, which is crazy because that's like all of what is now considered the new tier three up to like Stay of Mine. Because I guess Stay of Mine would be able to be taken on at tier three, potentially Echidna as well. I don't know how they're gonna kind of work that because. Echidna normal is 16.10 and then Echidna hard is 16.30 so I guess it depends on whether like Echidna or if like the upcoming tier 4 is going to be started at 16.20 or if it's going to be started at 16.40 I think it's going to be 16.40 because I think you get 16.20 then you do the new chaos dungeon that gives you all of your 1640 gear at tier four. So you jump 20 eye levels. Um, this is huge. Tier three support boost. A tier three progression boost will be added to help players advance in their Arcasian journey before tier four releases. Tier three progression will be eased in for the uh, following ways. Honing price up until 1580 will decrease. I think that this is okay. I think that the honing realistically probably could have went all the way up to 1600 but 1580 is a good start uh crafting upgrade set upgrade price will decrease so i would assume that it's going to take less materials to craft upgrade and set upgrade um so like where it's like 10 maybe it's gonna be like six or something like that so you don't have to go through as many uh elixir transmuting prices will decrease while supply uh will increase which we knew was going to happen that was inevitable uh transcendence restoration price will decrease while supply of dark fire will increase we we knew that these were coming this was the elixir nerf that everybody wanted permanent engraving support five by three and gems will be available to help player progression this is huge so the way that this was explained in korea is when you get to like punica you'll get a set of tiered gems as well as permanent five by three which is like the super makoko that we have now so every character that you level to punica will get five by three and will get gems and then as you complete more in the story uh you get higher level gems every single time that you complete for your class specific which is like that's huge especially like getting through like the early like vault and ficus cockle um even like into like braille to not have to worry about like getting your engravings getting your gems it's just like every character is makoko until tier four is like that's huge um the third gate will be removed of ivory tower i know that people were talking that they wanted gate one removed 
but gate three i know they were talking about they wanted to um uh, remove gate three because gate three also had the bridge so they could pull the bridge out as well and the overall speed then of ivory tower increases end game progression event we're working with smilegate on a new end game progression event that will be active throughout the summer to alleviate some of the grind as we head towards tier four we're still locking in the name and final rewards given to all the other content and changes coming but players will be reminded of events like path of the soul eater or descend into darkness that will help newer or returning players get their main ready for tier four or experienced players level up a favorite alt so this is basically like um descend into darkness gives you materials as well as it gives you um gives you materials as well as it gives you uh gold to be able to level up your gear um past the super makoko so if this is gonna happen right after super makoko comes out or after super makoko ends which is july 17th so i would assume that this is probably all gonna come on july 17th um this is like huge to prepare a main and then kind of get ready for when we're gonna see the next super makoko which i would assume is gonna be in september this is July, but they're talking July and August. So July and August, we'll have other events, updates, and cosmetics as we head towards Tier 4. We want the summer to be fun before September's major update, which I think is really big because everybody was talking about the fact that, like, if Tier 4 doesn't come out until September, there's really no point in, like, honing past, like, 1620. And if you can't hone past 1620, then it just like the game doesn't really feel like worth playing because there's so many players that are already 1620. Like for me, it's going to be worth playing still because of the fact that like I, I need to get characters to 1620. Like my main isn't even 1620. So for players like me that are trying to push a roster, it's going to like it makes sense to continue like that grind. But for players that are already there, it was like they could just like take the summer off and go fucking like swim or take a vacation or something. So this is good that they're giving a reason for uh, like solo mode, new events, all these like changes are all happening. So people can kind of like start to prepare for September, even if they are 1620, like they can get more characters there ready as well as like start to stack materials. Um, September... This is just like start this is uh basically i would assume this is what uh is gonna like explain what happened at loan uh north curzon content continent uh south curzon is where ominous signs of kazaros resurrection has been spotted that's where echidna is uh at this fall we will cross the land and venture further into the northern side so this is just uh basically like uh lore uh entry level will be 1620 so to be able to get into North Curzon, um, which by the way, this shit looks insane. Um, it's going to be 1620. Um, Behemoth raid, a 16 raid, uh, a 16 player raid against Behemoth will release granting tier four materials and weapons. Transcendence to victorious players with a limited pool of revives available. Prepare for mayhem as your group works together uh, to fell the enormous uh enormous dragon in a raid requiring item level 1640 so behemoth is gonna grant tier 4 materials which we kind of assumed was gonna happen because you already have to be 1640 but that means that anyone who honed to 1620 is gonna go to the chaos dungeon and get to 1640 and is gonna be ready to do behemoth without having having to level up any of their gear or get tier 4 it's just like already gonna be there ready for them which is like that's in like that's an insane jump um tier 4 new tier 4 gear will be added in relic and ancient levels maximum quality will be set to 120 so this is the update to quality um sidereal to 910 and infuse elgic 2 will be added okay uh, maximum quality to 120 the thing about this is people actually think that this is a nerf but this isn't a nerf because um there's pity now 
so you going from zero to 120 has the the same chances as you going from 90 to 120 but now there's a pity system so now it's actually going to be easier to get max quality than it was before obviously the people that have like already spent on 100 like it it's gonna kind of suck for them but i guess we have to like kind of see like how quality is gonna work um existing gear can all be used yeah this was all expected um the glow effects is really big glow effects will be preserved existing honing effects will be preserved in a new book meaning that you can freely select any old effects on weapons so this is basically just you being able to select your glow which was a really big thing because some people didn't like the the level 25 honing glow they liked the level 23 but they couldn't use 23 because they were now 25 but now it's going to store in a book that you'll be able to use um engravings with the new engraving systems five engravings can be selected class engravings can be changed in the arc passive system we'll explain this system later in an article yeah this system um didn't make a lot of sense people were trying to figure it out but it seems like it's all going to be through books um existing engravings can be upgraded by existing engraving re engraving recipes relic engravings can be added yeah this system didn't like the system didn't really make sense we'll have to see how this looks when it like actually comes to the game um when transferred from t3 gems tier 4 gems will be down level two levels from their old level that was expected for instance a tier 3 level 10 gem will transfer into a tier 4 level 8 gem yep makes sense crimson flame will be transferred to crimson flame while annihilation will be transferred to annihilation um okay tier 4 gems either crimson flame or annihilation will all have base attack damage increase effect along with effects exclusive for support classes so people wanted you to be able to transfer like crimson to annihilation and annihilation to crimson is like kind of that last like stitch wanting gems to be changed but that's not happening but this doesn't really make sense. so everything is now going to have a base attack damage increase whether it's a not whether it's a cooldown gem or a damage gem i wonder what the percentages are because i wonder if some of these builds are going to go to more uh like cooldown gems because of the base attack damage increases i'll be curious to see how this uh like switches up gems um ability stones tier 4 ability stones will be added while maintaining some of the value of t t3 ability stones t3 ability stones can be transferred to t4 ability stones so does that mean that people are going to be able to transfer their 9.7T3s to 9.7T4s? And I wonder what the effects are going to be. Interesting. I just love to see. Uh, engraving effects will be removed while additional effects will remain. So on accessories, you're not going to have any more like Raid Captain Grudge. Like that's all going to be gone. From tier 4 update, basic effects can be imbued to the accessories through refined reforge system. So this is the new system. Additional options will be added to bracelets. Existing T3 bra bracelets will also see opportunities for getting the effects regranted or converted. It will be possible to play through Kazaros Raid Agar with existing T3 bracelet. So you're not going to be forced into a tier 4 bracelet right away either. Interesting. I wonder... Okay, they're going to talk about it. I wonder what the eye level entry is to get into the new raids. New card packs and card sets. This We expected this. People were thinking that maybe they were just going to add it to the existing card packs. We knew that wasn't going to be the case. Um, A new 24 set will be added to the 1830 which is fine people honestly just want them to remove cards but i know that that's like never gonna happen because cards are like their baby um but getting the 24 set in between 1830 is nice 
um perfect block system so this is the parry this is where the the boss is gonna light up yellow and you're gonna have to parry an attack um so it's gonna be like another counter that you're gonna have to do inside the the raid itself so that's gonna be really interesting uh new battle items will be added and incoming dot damage will be revamped okay Level camp expansion, we knew this. Combat level 60 to 70, roster level 300 to 400. That means that literally I'm just going to get gate kept harder. That's cool. Skill level 12 to 14. So this is new. This is new. This is brand new. So I wonder if they're going to just... They're going to just move 12 to 14, probably give it more effects, and it's just going to cost more. Trade skill level increased to 70. Trade skill mastery level increased to 24. Okay. New dungeon, Knut Fortress, and Curzon Frontline. So this is where you're going to get your 1640 gear transfer from 1620 from tier 3. Um, Is a new hack and slash style content where 100 energy... Yeah, this is gas dungeon. Uh, additional changes, sailing coins and seals will each be unified into one token type. We knew that that was going to be a big thing. Um, Provident stones will be removed in order to give time for players to use the Provident stones. We will be running an interim exchange shop for some time. We knew this was going to happen. Partial content, special difficulties, co-op battles, deathmatch, throne spire, chaos line, tubalik will be removed. We knew this. They talked about this. They're just removing old content that nobody plays. Guild quests will be simplified along with the removal of Raid Match and Siege. So this is going to be really... It's going to be worth to be in a guild now. They didn't add in here, but the your whole roster can be in a guild now. And it like actually makes it worth. The skill tree limitation of 18 will be removed. The skill tree limitation of 18 will be removed. Are they meaning that, like, you're going to be able to have more skills? So, like, is Gunslinger about to be fucking insane? You're going to be able to have, like, fucking 30 skills? <laughs> um, Players will be able to do other activities during Party Finder. I wonder how this is going to work, but this is really, like, this is, this is dope. So while you're, like, searching for a lobby, you're going to be able to go and do other stuff. I wonder what's going to be included in this. Okay, so thus far, this is right on par with exactly when I said this was going to happen, as well as how it was going to happen. Like, I, I, like, marked these dates, like, almost to a T when this was going to happen. Uh, quarter for fall. This was again, right spot on with where I said that this was going to be. Dates and more details will be shared for the following systems and updates on our next roadmap. Um, so the Kazaros raid, um, this is the, the two gate raid, um, with a con, and then you fight Agar is the second. So it's a revive the con and gate one. And then Agar in the second gate, which is this uh this boss. And if you have not went to a low on video, go to the low on video and watch this. That that fight is gonna be insane. Um arc passive. So arc passive and hyper awakening. It's crazy that these are getting added this early. I didn't expect this to drop in the fall because they said for Korea that they didn't know when this was going to be ready for Korea. So I'm kind of surprised that they're like putting a date already on this. If there's anything on this list that I would expect there to be a delay on, it's going to be arc passive and it's going to be hyper awakening to each character is now going to get two new hyper awakenings, which means that they're going to get two new skills. And, like, seeing that for every class, I think is... There's definitely a potential in a delay for this system. Um, Arc Passive, 
there's a new combat system in whole that will replace the existing stats class engraving set effects which can be upgraded as the character progresses in this system the basic stacks uh stats evolution class specializ class specialization enlightenment and awakening skills ascension can be upgraded by connecting the nodes in the ui that re uh, resembles the skill tree evolution and enlightenment will be updated first while ascension will be included alongside hyper awakenings okay but don't worry because the existing tier 3 combat progressions are not going to go away completely our passive can be turned on and off by choice that means existing t3 stats class engraving set effects can be retained or new arc passives can be selected by choice everyone's going to use the arc passives because i'm sure that the arc passives are going to be stronger than the old system if they're not i'd be fucking surprised and it feels like it would be worthless because why would you use it um hyper awakening several hyper awakening skills will be added again as i said it seemed like two per class the impact will be between basic skills and awakening skills in terms of balance the skills can be acquired as rewards after clearing quests it can be strengthened by fulfilling certain conditions after clearing quests it can be interesting so i'm wondering if this is going to be open to players right off the rip and then upgraded over time depending on where you are in the story it's kind of what it seems like General, other updates such as new pet abilities, features, and Buzzling Island are planned for this time period as well. Next week, we're excited to see you encounter new threats and storylines in South Corazon, and as you face Echidna in the first Kazros raid. Thank you to all of our players for joining us on this journey so far. We're grateful to have such an engaged community, and we'll keep working hard to deliver new content you'll enjoy. We'll also prepare the next roadmap to dive into, um, which once you can expect to see some of the exciting new raids release and share the full plan in July. The road ahead is exciting. Share more adventures and Arcasia. Stay tuned. So, literally exactly what I said was what they wanted to do. They wanted to make sure that they did this correctly. And so far they have. And now they have to deliver. So, AGS and Smilegate, please, for the sake of, like, Lost Ark and my sanity and video games as a whole, please don't say that this is going to release in July and then release in fucking September. This is so exciting and so huge for Lost Ark. And new players and existing players coming back to the game. Please just do this right. That's all I ask. That's it. I don't ask much. But it's exciting. So recapping. Because it's a lot of fucking information. July. Solo modes. Tier 3, su tier three support boost. Which is Super Makoko. Ivory Tower Gate 3 gone. Um, and the end game progression event. Which is going to help people to push forward. Getting ready for North Curzon. North Curzon in September, as well as uh, the Behemoth Raid, Tier 4, and the new dungeons for 1640, and all of the other changes. And in the fall of 2024, we are looking at the new raid, Arc Passive, and Hyper Awakening. So basically, July and August, we are going to prepare for tier four tier four is going to come out in september we're going to go through tier four in september and then in the fall we prepare for the new casaros raid so it all makes sense they just need to do it right we'll see we will see it's exciting the future is super super bright um they also talked about uh, some of the things in the June update today. This was very, very minimal. They kind of just went through, said you're going to get some rewards, yada, yada, yada. Kind of just recapping this. Uh, but super exciting when the video for this comes out of more in depth. All right. So, YouTube, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe on the video. Many, many more for these to come as we kind of get more information. 
It is super exciting, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.